Okay, I will not bump into a lamp at the beginning of this video. Hello. Um, Maybe you just watched the last video. Maybe you had a chance to look at the p-vector class a little bit, try it in your code. Hopefully, you didn't have too many problems. If you did, hopefully, somebody helped you. I hope I helped you in some way. Um, in this video, we now are going to take a break in some, well, actually, we're not really. We're still going to look at the p-vector class, but we're going to take a break from this. We've got this like laser focus where we're going to build our first simple, simple physics engine. But we're going to take a break from that just to kind of walk through a few key concepts in, I feel the need to write this, and I'm going to say p vector, p, no, just vector, where should I write this? Over here, vector math. Breathe, breathe. We're using the word math, but it's OK. It's comforting, soothing, relaxing math, joyful math. It's going to be fine. I, I feel a little bit of anxiety at myself because I don't want to screw this up. But we're going to get through it together. OK, vector math. Now, here's the thing. Let's go over here for a second. Ah, come on, camera. <laughs> Did you really go off? Am I back? Did this go off? Oh, here we are. I don't know what went off. Something went off. Um, sorry. OK, we're back. Hi. I don't, maybe I'll edit that out. And uh, yeah, that's probably not going to happen. OK, so look over here. This is the processing p vector documentation page. Now, this isn't a comprehensive lesson on everything you could possibly ever do with vectors in your entire life. But one thing we want to look at just to get started here is if we scroll down a little bit, we can see here are a list of functions available in the p vector class. Random, set, mag, mag squared. I don't know, maybe I want to make this bigger so we can really see it. Add, subtract, multiply, divide, distance, dot, cross, normalize, limit, set mag, heading, rotate, lerp. There's lots of functions. I actually want to just look through four simple ones in this video. We're at, uh, you know, if you are making some strange commitment to kind of go through all of this stuff with me, we will get to other things. We will get to the dot product. We will get to other mathematical pieces about vectors. But I, my feeling here is that it's more important to look at them when they're necessary, when we're using them in an actual application, an actual example, rather than just kind of, woo, look, math functions, juggling. Um, but I do want to take the time before we get back into the physics stuff to looking at four basic things. And let's make a list of those things. So those things, I don't know, I'm going to do that over here. We're going to look at add, which kind of comes with it, the idea of subtraction. We're going to look at multiply, which kind of comes with it, the idea of division. And I should also just kind of say, let's think of this with the word scale. Multiplying, what I really mean there is scaling a vector, growing it, shrinking it. But we'll get to that. I want to look at magnitude. How do we actually, uh, and I guess I'm going to use, well, I'm just going to write that whole word out. And I want to look at normalize. The magnitude function processing, by the way, is just mag. OK, so I want to look at these four math functions with vectors. I want to make a little simple processing sketch that kind of dabbles in them, that demonstrates how the syntax works and what they're doing. And once we have these tools here, we're going to be able to go on to the next video and make uh, another thing move around the screen. By the way, OK, I had a couple mishaps, but uh, we're back in the same video. <laughs> OK, uh, the board looks a little different, but you know everything's OK. Nothing bad happened here. OK, um, we have a little time left. Uh, I want, you know, I want, what I want to do in this time that we have left, because we have an infinite amount of time, as long as I can stand here and keep talking, but I don't want this to go on for too long. I want to walk through these four mathematical operations that are available in the p vector class. And we're going to start with add. Now, add is actually something we're quite familiar with already, because we said location.add velocity. That's something we did in the previous video. What did it mean to add the location vector and the velocity vector? It means add the velocity's x component to location's x component. Add velocity's y component to location's y component. We're comfortable with that, and that's actually all we need to know. But I think it's worth examining visually for a moment what it means to add vectors. Now, Let's say we have uh, two vectors, v and u. Here's the vector v. Here is uh, the vector I'm going to u. I'm going to draw sort of two strange looking vectors. Now, one thing I should point out is this notation, v with an arrow on top. 
That is vector notation. That's what you would find in a mathematics or physics textbook. Um, we're going to use that from time to time just when we're talking about diagrams and notation. But for the most part, we're not going to see vector notation because we're working in source code. So there's nothing but just sort of raw text there. No arrows on top or weird squiggly lines or strange spirally Greek letters or whatever. But we're going to use that from time to time. So what does it mean to add two vectors? What it means is, so let's say w, uh, w equals v plus u. What it means to add two vectors is to put them end to end. So we can draw v like this. We can draw u like this. And then here, this is w, which equals v plus u. v plus u. So if we put vectors end to end, we're adding, and that makes sense. If w is instructions for how to get from here to there, then we follow the instructions from u, how to get from here to there. And our new vector from the, where we started to where we ended up is adding those two vectors together. This actually maps exactly to what we're doing with location and velocity. right? Let's make a little processing window right here. Here is our location, right? That is where our, we're drawing our little bouncing ball. It's at that location. What is the location vector? It is a vector that tells us how to get from the origin to that location. So it points from 0, 0 to that location. Now, if we want to add velocity to that location, and let's say this is our current velocity, then we put those vectors end to end like this. And this vector right here is location plus velocity. So this is what we're doing. And now the ball is at this new location. So that's exactly what we're doing when we're using vectors in our code to move something around the screen. Velocity changes location over time. It maps to exactly what the, sort of, the, the underlying mathematics of adding vectors is. And we know from doing this that to add v plus u means add the components together. What I mean by that is w sub x equals v sub x plus u sub x. w sub y equals v sub y plus u sub y. Look at that. We just made this all in the math sub this, that. And it, it feels kind of relaxing and fine, right? This is OK. You guys are OK with this. <sighs> Deep breath. OK, now let's move on a little bit. If we know add, then we kind of instantly know subtract. And normally, I might stop and not go over anything about subtract. However, subtracting vectors is so common in all the examples that we're going to do. It, there's something more to it than just, the, just saying I'm putting a minus where a plus is. Now, in truth, there isn't any more to it. It just is, if we want to say w equals v minus u, all we need to do is ah, put a minus there and put a minus there. But let's look at what that means in terms of a diagram. So this is v. This is u, right? But if we want to say v minus u, this vector is minus u. So, and if I just move this little thing here, this here is v minus u. So we put vectors end to end, but instead of v plus u, u's direction is inverted. Negative of a vector is the same vector with the same magnitude, but in the opposite direction. Now we get v minus u. Now why is that useful? Let's just say for a moment that we have something here and we have something here. Let's say this is the center of the screen. That's a vector called center. And this is a vector called mouse. It's where the mouse is. I'm going to draw a little mouse pointer. <laughs> Sorry, I got lost into drawing the little mouse pointer for a moment. OK, here we are. Now, what does it mean to say mouse minus center? Let's look at that. Mouse minus center. Mouse, now this is center. Let's put center like in, this is the that vector over here in the reverse direction. Look, this vector over here is mouse minus center. In other words, it's this vector. 
I didn't draw that very well. This is kind of a little bit of a disaster. I think this is something that I'm going to have to work on, how to describe this and explain this. But hopefully, you're following it somewhat, right? The reason why subtract is so useful is if we want to make a vector that points from one location to another location, we use subtract, right? But it makes sense. Like, if location plus velocity is the new location, the new location minus the previous location would be that velocity. And we can use this. We're going to use this a lot. For example, when we want to do gravitational attraction between two bodies, we need to know we need to have a vector that points from one body to the other one so we can subtract their locations. Subtracting two locations gives us a vector that points from one to the other. One thing that's misleading about these diagrams, which I should point out, is that I kind of drew the vector over here, so it seems like it's in the wrong place. Vectors don't have a place. Vectors just describe a magnitude and a direction. We position them around some sort of diagram to try to explain something, but there is no like, actual location for that vector. So what I mean by a vector that describes the difference between these two points, we use subtract for that. And let's, let's move and let's actually make our processing example do this. Wow, this is getting long. I guess you're watching long videos today. What can I do? I don't know what else to do. Am I over here? I'm over here. OK, so I have a little processing sketch which shows a dot in the center, and you can see where the mouse is. What I want to make is a vector that points from that dot to the mouse. And we can do that rather easily. I can say p vector mouse is a new vector where the mouse is, uh, mouse x, mouse y. And then I want to say p vector center is a new vector in the center of the window. And now I want to subtract center from mouse. So this is that operation. Mouse equals mouse minus center. What do I get there? I get the difference between the mouse location and the center location. And if I were to draw a line now, a line that starts at 0, 0 to mouse.x, mouse.y, let's run this. We can see I now have a line that's always pointing. Now, why is that line starting in the center of the window? I drew it at 0, 0. If you notice, translate, I had this extra little bit of code earlier. If you're not familiar with 2D transformations, you should go stop right now, go to the processing website, processing.org slash learning slash transform 2D. You should go look through how translate, rotate, push matrix, pop matrix, all that stuff works. We're going to use that in these examples, right? This is not like, some of this stuff is kind of basic, some of this stuff requires some previous knowledge. But you can see here that now we now have a line that points points from the mouse to the center. Great. So that is subtraction and addition. We're going to keep going. Eight minutes plus five minutes, 13, I don't know, it's going to be some 20 minute video. I got to keep going. OK. Because the, the, the other stuff, I'm going to press this button. I know this is not, I'm I kind of, I'm a little tired. I need to go eat lunch a little low, like a little woozy. But um, I, I, don't worry. <laughs> I'm going to be fine. I mean, I don't, not, not that you're actually worried. Anyway, um, OK. Let's move on to multiply. I think maybe we're going to do magnitude and normalize in a separate video, because I, I feel like we, we, but I want to get to multiply for a second, because I think it's going to show something pretty useful um, that um, um, we can maybe use. So um, let's just get to multiply, and we're going to take a short break. I mean, it's no break for you. You can just keep watching. But I'm going to take a short break. OK, multiply. Now, what do I mean by multiply? When we had u and v, right, our friends, u, we said u plus v. I mean, we could say, eh, hey, u multiplied v. There really isn't a multiplication operation in the, the way that we might initially think for multiplying two vectors. There are some multiplication-like activities, activities, fun activities for you to do on a Saturday afternoon. The dot product and the cross product. So that's cut off, but that says dot and that says cross, right? But what we want to actually look at is this scenario, u times n. So when we use the mult or multiply, what stands for multiply function in processing, what we really mean is scale. What we're looking to do is scale the vector grow it or shrink it. And what we do that is we scale it by a scalar value. So when we say a vector, we mean a collection of values. A two-dimensional vector is x and a y. A three-dimensional vector is an x, y, and z. When we say a scalar, we mean a singular quantity. So if we have this vector, v, what if we were to say v times 2? 
what do you think we do? We keep the vector's same exact direction, but we grow its length by a factor of 2. So this is the new vector, times 2. If I were to say v times 0.1, 0 0.1, now my vector v is 10% of its length. So this is actually a really simple thing to do, and it's really useful. What if we calculate a force later? We calculate a gravitational force, but we only want it to be half as strong. We multiply it by 0.5. We could even have a slider that maps to a value between 0 and 2, and we can, the user can make a force stronger or weaker by using this multiplication um, function. Um, we're scaling it, growing it, shrinking it. So let's take a look at what that means. Over here, we can see once, we've, once we have got this vector called mouse, we can now say something like mouse.multiply. I'm going to multiply it by 5, which is kind of going to be insane because I've got to really get the mouse back, 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 back. And you can see no matter where the mouse is, the vector's length is now 5 times the, um, that line that's between the center and the mouse. I, I, <laughs> weather men have a really hard time. Like, how do they do that? Like, know where they're looking. OK, so uh, we can also say, I can say 0.1, 0 0.1. So now it's going to be 10%. And you can see that as I move the mouse here, it's growing. We're only at 10% of the length. So scaling a vector using the mult function is a pretty good thing. So I, I think I want this to be a video. It really probably should be in three parts. Maybe I will actually make it in three parts. It's at least in two parts right now. In the next video, we're going to go over magnitude and normalize, which are also two important operations in processing with vectors. OK, uh, I'm going to um, get some like, orange juice or something. I don't have any orange juice, whatever. OK, goodbye. <laughs> Carry on. The press stop here.